بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على عبده ورسوله نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه ومن اهتدى بهديه وسلم سنته الى يوم الدين اما بعد This is not a formal lecture and because usually I'm used to doing formal lectures abroad in Saudi Arabia it seems a little bit awkward for me I'm tuned to speak Arabic in Saudi Arabia so now I'm, I'm having difficulties in adjusting but it's just a simple reminder everything you're gonna hear you've heard before and you know it maybe better than I do but inshallah in reminding one another there are many many benefits to start with Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran Allah Azza wa Jal in this concise, in short surah, every one of us memorizes it by heart. But it has so much profound and powerful meaning to it that some of us may neglect or may not be aware of. Allah says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, by al asr and Asr translates to either the prayer, which is known as Asr, or as the most authentic opinion is the time. So Allah is swearing by time, which is something that is relative on earth, but after the day of judgment, there isn't any such a thing as time. It's either in heaven, may Allah make me and you among those who are admitted to paradise forever, or it is for in hell forever, may Allah protect us all. Verily, Allah says, man is in loss. So no exception. Every single human being is in loss. Except those who have these four characteristics. They believe in Allah Azza wa Jal. They do righteous deeds. They recommend one another to be on truth. And they recommend one another to be patient. A Shafi'i, one of the prominent, uh, one of the four prominent uh, scholars of Islam, said by Allah, if only this surah was revealed to humankind or to mankind, it would have been sufficient. To us now we say, sufficient. Come on. I could barely understand. It's easy. You know, it's not easy. If you look deep into it, you would see the magnificence of Allah's word, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, I'm not going to talk about this surah. I'm going to talk about patience. And patience was mentioned in the Quran over 70 times. Allah Azza wa Jal praised patience. And He recommended the Prophet ﷺ to be patient. And if we go or scroll down the verses that talk about patience, it would be Fajr time before yani we are uh, through it. Allah Azza wa Jal has promised those who are patient with success. With falah. So those who are patient, they will have success. Not only that, Allah Azza wa Jal had told us that those who are patient will get forgiveness and will get the great reward. So all of these are indications. Allah Azza wa Jal is mentioning it so many times in the Quran for us to be patient. But sometimes we don't yeah, pay attention to that. Allah Azza wa Jal promised a man who was tested through taking his sight. Imagine going into the bathroom with your eyes closed or without any electricity and doing what you have to do in less than a minute or two and then open your eyes and you find that you've made a big mess. Now, if a person is blind, Allah Azza wa is testing him, but the person is content and is pleased. He's patient. What is the reward? Allah says there is no reward for him except Jannah. If a person has a child, an offspring, a child that he loves and adores, and Allah Azza wa tests him, and that child dies. And the man says, Alhamdulillah. The woman says, Alhamdulillah. Allah Azza wa will build him, because of his patience, a house called the house of Alhamd, of the praise. Because he's praising Allah Azza wa Now the problem is, who thinks of all of these hadiths and verses when the calamity takes place. Allah Azza wa Jal promised in the Quran those who are patient to double their rewards and 
another verse to reward them without account. Yani everything, it might be weighed, everything might be measured by size, but when you're patient, Allah Azza wa does not measure. He just <coughs> gives Subhanahu Azza wa Jal. Allah Azza wa Jal also told us in the Quran that in Allah Allah is with those who are patient, those who tolerate, those who endure for His sake. Allah is with you. Yes, but I'd like yani, the armed forces to be to give us a helping hand. I need this person with a lot of influence in the government. I need this much money. Allah is with you, Akhi. Are you a believer? Isn't Allah enough for you? If you're patient, Allah is with you. Not only that, Allah, the Prophet told us that victory is with patience. <coughs> so whenever you're patient, Allah will, would bestow the victory and you will be victorious and you'll prevail with, this, with the uh, uh, grace of Allah Azza wa Jal. Those who are patient, Allah loves them. Yeah, what more do you need? If you come out of today, tonight's talk and you feel content of whatever is happening to you and you feel that you want to be patient on what Allah commanded you to do and you want to be patient away from the things that Allah forbade you to do, Wallahi, by Allah, Allah would be with you. Allah Azza wa Jal would love you. Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala will take care of you. But you have to do something. You have to approach Allah Azza wa Jal to find all of this. Now, what is patience? In Arabic, it's easy. We call it al-habs. is to imprison yourself, is to refrain from doing something. But when you come to different places where patience is mentioned or sabr is mentioned in the Quran, you would find that it has different meanings. So, when I tell you to be patient with sins, <coughs> oh, Shaykh, I used to do a sin and then get frightened. Now you're asking me to be patient with sins. No, no, you're, you're misunderstanding. The sabr an al haram, a sabr ala al awajib. It's it's different prepositions, but in English it, sometimes people fail to translate. So when you look at the meaning of sabr in the Quran and the Sunnah, you'd find that it means to tolerate, to uh, endure, to refrain from, to be steadfast on. So all of these revolve around this beautiful word of as-sabr. And it has uh, 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 three meanings or three definitions to it, three uh, uh, divisions that scholars usually talk about, and you all know that. So they say, As-sabru ala al-ma'mur, as-sabru ala al-mahdur, as-sabru ala al-maqdur. It all rhymes in Arabic, but when you, once you want to translate it to English, it becomes a little bit difficult. You need a rapper probably to uh, uh, put something in line. First of all, one division is that you, part of being patient or sabr, that you be patient when executing good deeds. Now, a lot of us may fail to do this because good deeds are hard on the soul. So if I'd like to say, okay, I have an hour, I'd like to pray the hundred for an hour, after five minutes, I go back to bed. Zalla if I did five minutes, yeah, I'm doing well, alhamdulillah. So, this is the first time, doing good deeds, and you be patient on doing them. And I'll elaborate a little bit further, inshallah. Uh, bad deeds, you have to refrain. Be patient, meaning that you have to refrain from doing it. It's so tempting. But if you put your hand in the cookie jar, then something would happen. It's, it's wrong. So you have to control yourself, you have to endure, you have to uh, try your level best not to do it, and this patience, Allah will reward you. And we will come to mention this. Last and third division is the thing that you have no other choice. In the first two, you had a choice to do good deeds or to stay away from bad deeds. The third division is something you have no choice in, and that is when a calamity strikes. I lost my car, I had a car accident. I lost my wallet, my money, I have this, I have that. I, my, my child is sick. I got fired from my job. It's a calamity. Do I have anything to do with it? No, it is a test from Allah. What to do? You have no other choice but to be patient. Now this is the lower level. The higher level is to be happy and content. Because Allah did not decree this except because there is good in it for you. Do you know that there is good in it for you? 
Mm, yes, I believe in that, and I'm happy for that. Say, Alhamdulillah, this is the highest level of content. And we will go through this, inshallah. What is the ruling on patience? Do I have to be patient? It has the five uh, verdicts or rulings that we have in fiqh. It can be mandatory, it can be forbidden, it can be recommended, it can be not recommended or disliked, and it can be permissible. Five categories. Everything we do falls under these five categories, independent. So if someone says, what's the ruling on being patient on praying Fajr in the Masjid? Say, this is wajib, you have to do this. What's the ruling on being patient from listening to music or watching uh, uh, scrubs or soap operas? And we're in the hospital, so they watch a lot of scrubs. So what's the ruling on that? Oh, haram. It is forbidden for you to be patient. Yes, Sheikh, but it's like in half an hour. Wrap up the program and let, let's watch it. I, I cannot be patient. No, you have to be patient here. And if you're patient on going and watching it and doing the haram, this is haram. And likewise with the recommended and not recommended and with the permissible thing. Okay, then we Muslims say we have it figured out right. We are the most patient people on earth. Is this correct? Yes or no? Whisper it to, to the man on your right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I will not do that. Ha! Huh? Come on, guys. Is it right? Are we the most patient people on earth? No. No, even the kuffar, the disbelievers, have patience. Some of them have greater patience than us. Allah mentioned in Surah, uh, Surah Sa'ad that they're advising one another to move on and to be patient on worshipping your idols. Don't listen to these people who are telling you worship only one God. So they are recommending one another. I remember. And I think I have some time to reflect. Um, a few years back, like 14, years, 15 years ago, Christopher Reed was Superman, mashallah, mashallah, okay, okay, and Talha bin Ubaidillah was, okay, let's not go there, okay, Christopher Reed was Superman, the guy was a handsome, good looking, athletic actor, and he had a beautiful wife, and he had four children, and he was uh, I don't know how they call it in, in Arabic, in English. He used to ride horses and jump fences. There's a, a, a terminology for that. Whatever. So, the guy was a professional. I used to compete. And one day, out of the blue, while he was attempting to jump a fence, the horse thought that there's a rabbit or something that crossed by, so it froze. And this happens. And when you are, you know, running in a high speed trying to jump and then all of a sudden your car breaks or your horse just freezes you start to feel like a real superman so the guy started i believe i can fly <laughs> and the poor thing fell on his neck broke it and he was paralyzed neck down he was in rehab for about six to eight weeks this was an interview in newsweek about eight ten pages he was telling about his ordeal and how many times he thought that uh, uh, he should commit suicide because he did not breathe except through a, ven uh, a ventilator, is it? Or whatever. We have doctors here, they, they, they can figure it out. So, and then he managed to learn how to breathe with this machine. It was with him all the time. And he said that killing myself is wrong. This is a test from God. I looked at the footnotes. Maybe he's a Muslim, he's not. And within six to eight weeks, the guy was participating on his wheelchair, unable to do anything, unable to move except to speak, not even to breathe. He participated in the Paralympics, I think, this is for the, the uh, uh, physically challenged or whatever they call them. And a week later, he participated in a yacht or a, a, a boat race that was in, and they were showing his picture just sitting there with all the makeup and and the guy kept on doing donations and doing so many good things on his life. And he was not a believer. He was not a Muslim. And this brings us to the classification of people as the scholars say. When it comes to patience and, Islam, and Iman, people are divided into four types. One, those who have Iman and patience. And these are the elite of the human race. These are the Muslims who have Islam, who have belief, they are, oh, and they're patient, 
on all the three divisions that we mentioned and we will elaborate a little bit more. Category two, those who are believers, but they are not patient. And this is the majority of Muslims. Ibn Taymiyyah and Ibn Qayyim, they elaborate and they say, the majority of us are from this category, meaning that we are believers. We pray, we fast, we attend, mashallah, lectures, and we give donations, and we do tahajjud, unless we are tested. And when the test comes, this reveals our true identity. This reveals our true iman. Akhi, I need to travel tomorrow to Riyadh. I don't have any seats and uh, I need wasta. Okay, but you have, I have to cancel someone and put you his seat. The hell with it. I have to leave, man. I have to go. We start to, instead of bending rules, we start to break them. And this shows the lack of patience. This mu'amala, this paper cannot be done except if you put 5,000 riyals under the counter. Do it. It's a bribe. Do it. Allah is forgiving. Mecca is half an hour away. Make tawaf sa'id. And take bake while coming back. And skip fajr because of the garlic. It's also all that a combination. This reveals your true identity. And may Allah Azza wa Jal conceal our shortcomings and not expose us. Because Allah, I've seen people being exposed like this. And I'm afraid that I will be exposed as well. So we pray to Allah to conceal our uh, uh, shortcomings and to make us steadfast on this thing. The third category are those who are disbelievers, but they are patient. They have the sabr in them to tolerate. And one of them is Christopher Reeve. And there are so many. Babi al Khurami, for example, he was one of uh, uh, the followers of uh, uh, a sect or a religion that allows men to marry their sisters and daughters and mothers and it's part of the majus and, and they had two gods and light and darkness and etc. This guy fought the rulers uh, uh, for about 20 years until they captured him and he killed a hundred thousands of, of, of Muslims. When they captured him, the Khalifa ordered that he would be uh, uh, amputated, his limbs would be amputated one by one and then his tongue, and then he would be crucified until uh, left dead. So the minute they started cutting his right hand, the blood gushed out. He took the blood with his left hand and wiped it on his face. And the Khalifa told him, wait, wait, wait. Now this has a story. Bring him. Why did you do what you had done? He said, well, if I start to bleed, my face will get yellow. And then you think that I'm scared of dying. So I didn't want you to get this impression. لَعْنَةَ اللَّهَ عَلَيْكَ May Allah curse this kafir. But look at his patience. He believes in his cause and he's in hell. But he believed and they chopped his left hand, his right leg, his left leg, his uh, tongue and he did not utter a single sigh. Not a single word. This is patience. But he's a kafir. And the worst of all categories are those who don't have Iman and they don't have uh, 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 patience. And that's why if you go to Sweden, for example, beautiful country, beautiful people, beautiful uh, economy, yet the highest rate in committing suicide. Why? No Iman, no patience. So I have, I had done everything. So what's left? Let me try to jump from 120 stories high building and see maybe I would lie on my feet. So Alhamdulillah for the grace of Allah Azza wa Jal. Now, going back to the original question, is patience a, char a characteristic of only the believers? The answer is no. Disbelievers may share this with us, but it is a prominent sign that this person could be a believer. So the majority of Muslims, inshallah, they have patience in them. And their role model are the prophets and messengers of Allah Azza wa Jal. Take a look at Nuh. And this is a role model for every day. How long have you been doing da'wah? Talking about myself, very little. How much do you devote for da'wah from your day? Well, a week, maybe yes, an hour for da'wah. But I convince myself that I'm doing something good by playing around. Okay, what about you? The same thing. No, you have to raise the level of your da'wah, commitment, by looking at Nuh. Nuh, peace be upon him. 
Allah mentioned in the Quran that he stayed for a whole 10 uh, centuries except 50 years. 1,000 years except, yani 950 years, he kept on giving da'wah. How, how many times did you give da'wah to your non-Muslim mother? Oh, Shaykh, I spent with her like half an hour. And when she cursed me, I left her for six years. I haven't called her since. <laughs> this is uh, through uh, cases happening. Huh? I know people who, this is not like, you know, flashy. You know, this reminds you of the nightclubs. <laughs> That's it. Patience. Why is this happening to me? So we have commercial breaks, if you have anything to advertise, alhamdulillah, we back live. So, you have to look at your da'wah and compare it to Nuh Bisqi Al-Qarim, your colleagues at the office. I know people that have spent like six or seven years giving da'wah to their colleagues until alhamdulillah they started practicing or reverted. And I know big knowledgeable people who could only spend five minutes and then they got high blood pressure and frustrated and they did, did, do not give salam to the brothers who pray with them in the masjid. Why? Yeah, I spoke to him about his beard. He's not growing his beard. I will not give him salam. He's kafir? No, no, no. But this is, this is just to show him. Yeah, you're not showing anybody. It's like, you look, look at Satan sitting there and he's laughing his head off. This is not the way that the Prophet did Ali Salam or Prophet Muhammad and definitely not Nuh. Look at the uh, uh, patience of Ibrahim. Ibrahim is a chapter on his own. He is the father of all messengers and he is Khalil Rahman. No one is the best friend of Allah except two. Ibrahim and Muhammad peace be upon them all Allah And we mention his name every time we pray in the Tashahud. So Ibrahim is, is, is a category of his own. And he is an ummah by his own. When he was a teenager, they threw him in the fire that was so huge, people say tales about it. And he did not even blink. Do you have anything? Do you need anything? Allah Azza wa Jal is sufficient for us. SubhanAllah. This is all what he said. And Allah saved him. Did he go back home and retire? Allah said, I did my, my thing. No, he kept on doing da'wah, going left, right, and center to call people to Islam. And if you are in his position, you would think that, okay, listen, I have credit. Huh? If I go to Umrah tonight, and I do a, a good Umrah tawaf and say, well, going, coming back in the car, I might, I might listen to a, a song here or there. I go home and watch a couple of movies. Hey, what are you doing? This is haram. Yeah, yeah, but I have credit. I just did wrong. <laughs> so you would say, yeah, this is how we think. This is how we deal with Allah Azza wa Jalla. This is extremely wrong. But may Allah forgive us. Ibrahim, one would think that okay, he is the messenger of Allah. He is the Khalil of Allah. Yet, when he was like 80 years old, he circumcised himself with an axe because Allah told him to do this. It was an ah, infection. We're in the hospital. Okay, uh, is there any uh, doctor in the house? Do it, it's, it's over. Now he didn't have any children, did he complain? No, did he ask what's rolling on uh, IVF or what, what they call it, okay, if it's the egg from surrogate, surrogate mother and then India is doing it. Yeah, this is not under question at all. What did he do? Nothing, he's patient. And then Allah Azza wa Jal gives him a child, gives him Ismail from his wife Hajar. And so happy with this firstborn, Allah tells him, take her and her child from Iraq and go to Mecca. Mecca. At the time, they didn't have any GPS, but everybody knows Mecca was no man's land. It was desert, mountains, no water, nothing. Nobody lived there. He didn't even check again. He took his wife. They traveled. The good wife did not ask, where are we leaving? What should I take? Uh, uh, heavy clothes or uh, uh, light clothes? She went with him. Once he reached Mecca, he put them there. He turned his back and walked. She said, who are you leaving this for? What are you going? There's no food. There's no water. There's no hotels. Nothing. And he didn't 
even look back. He kept on walking. The Khalil of Allah, the beloved friend of Allah, Azza wa Jal. Do you think that his heart was happy? Wow, I could get married again. He was being torn from the inside. His son, who, who he, he was waiting for so long, he didn't look back. And then the believing woman said, did Allah order you to do this? He said, yes. She said, go. Allah would not leave us. Patience. Ibrahim was tested again. He left for many years, peace be upon him, and came back only to find his son yeah, almost close to the, year, to the age of puberty, 14 years of age, 15 years of age. And then one day he wakes up and says, my son, I saw a dream, I saw a vision that I have to slaughter you. Now, this is a vision, come on. Maybe you did this, no, this is a revelation. All messengers of Allah, when they see a vision, it's a revelation. So he knows that. But does the young child know that? No, he doesn't. And he says, believing in his father and believing in Allah, as I did before of that, oh my father, do what you're told. You will find me among the patient. Yani Allah, you, you cease to wonder. Who should you yani, uh, be shocked more with? The behavior of Ibrahim or of Ismail? Ibrahim never looked back. He took the knife. He wanted to slaughter. Allah Azza wa Jal gave this sacrifice and he gave us this beautiful story to see how to be a true worshiper to Allah Azza wa Jal. How to be a true slave of Allah Azza wa Jal. Why did I say that this is a vision of a prophet and it's a revelation? I don't want you to wake up tomorrow morning saying that I saw a vision that I'm slaughtering my wife. So, so, no, this is definitely not intended. This is specifically only for messengers and prophets of Allah Azza wa Jal. Musa also tolerated the harassment of the sons of Israel and their blasphemy and their rejection of everything he had brought them. And that is why the Prophet when once he was harassed in a similar way and he was frustrated, but then again we have uh, Allah Allah Allah. Anyhow, maybe this skips a new look and it's for lectures from now on. Maybe <laughs> next time we have colored lights and yeah. So the Prophet once he was told that they said this and that about him, he was frustrated, but then he said, May Allah have mercy on my brother Musa. He was abused more than this and he tolerated it. He was patient. So we learn from Musa, we learn from Isa. Peace be upon him. We know what they did to him and they the last thing they tried, they tried to crucify him, to kill him. But Allah Azza wa ascended him to him. We uh, know what his father did. Who's Yusuf's father? Huh? This is the messenger, he's not a sahabi. You should know. The Prophet was asked, who is the most honorable person of all? He said, you, uh, Yusuf ibn Ya'qub. Ibn Ishaq, Ibn Ibrahim. You should know the uh, forefathers of these uh, blessed messengers of Allah, of the prophets of Allah Azza wa Jal. So he was patient when his siblings, his own brothers, left him in a well for death. Yet he was patient because this is something from Allah Azza wa Jal and so on. So, the first category, you have to be patient on whatever Allah Azza wa Jal ordered you to do. Salah, does it need patience? Allah, it does a lot, I need a lot of patience. When you wake up in the morning, now Alhamdulillah, Fajr is late. So it's like half an hour and then you're off to work. But when you are in, in, in uh, summer, and it's like four o'clock, and if you're living in the eastern province, as I travel sometimes there, and it's like three o'clock, and then, you have a problem of waking up. And if you're in England and you have Fajr at 2.30 and Isha at 11.30 and you have to fast Ramadan and you get tons of emails, eh, do we have a way out? Uh, should I make Hijrah? <laughs> this is not the proper time to make Hijrah. Eh? Only for Ramadan and come back. People have difficulties but they are patient because they seek the reward from Allah Azza wa Jal. So, uh, uh, to be kind to your parents needs patience, especially when they're old, when they're young, 
And your father is, mashallah, full of muscles that he could, you know, just kick your uh, backside. <laughs> then you respect him and you tend to be kind. But when he's like in his 80s and he speaks to you and he doesn't hear what you say and he, you repeat what you say five, six times and if you're a little bit late or you bring him something that he is not very happy with and he starts to shout at you, he, shaitan comes. You need patience to kiss his feet and to obey him and to be tolerant with him because he has few days left and a door to paradise will be closed for you. And so many of us has, have lost this door. May Allah Azzawajal forgive all our parents. Then you move on to Al-Amr uh, Ma'roof al nahal Munkar. You see something wrong from a Muslim next to you. You have to be patient when you advise him and you have to be patient when you prohibit him from uh, doing something that is biased or something that is evil. All of these things need patience. Patience before you do them. So I'm going to pray Fajr, I have to be patient to wake up. Patient while doing them. So while in the, in the Fajr, the Imam is reciting the Surah too long. He should have recited over two rakats. He's reciting it in one rakat. This is too much for me. And you have to be patient afterwards, after the good deeds, because you have to suppress your feeling of showing off. So many people come to the office, sit, oh, yawning, and, okay, okay, and I ignore them, I play with my keyboard, and then I say, hey okay, guys, they're asking me, and I'm, I'm not even going to ask. He said, well, I'm very tired. I'm not going to ask you why. And I change the subject, say, oh, I'm tired, because last night I, I, I spent two hours praying the Hajj. But may Allah make it sincere. <laughs> what sincerity are you talking about? You have blown the whole thing up. You need to be patient after the ibadah, after the worship, by not concealing it, by not showing off, because this is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you come to refrain from sins, you need to be patient. And this is harder than doing uh, uh, something else. Maybe charity, I can give 10 riyals for a poor person. Fasting, mm, a little bit difficult, let me skip this. But tahajjud, yeah, I wake up in the middle of the night, I don't feel sleepy, so I may pray to rakahs and witr, it's easy. But when you tell me to refrain from haram, from things that my self loves and adores, this is, this becomes yeah, problematic. When a brother comes and says, did you see what Shaykh so-and-so said? <laughs> yes, the Shaykh is ignorant, he is arrogant, and he doesn't have knowledge. Look at his throat, it's below his ankles, look at his beard, he's been cutting it, and his wife doesn't wear the hijab, and I think that his aqeed is. I enjoy this. But this is haram. I have to refrain from doing this. I can't. My tongue just goes out like a lizard, subhanAllah. I, I can't hold it. Ah, then here comes patience. You have to be patient away from haram. Why don't you cover your face, my sister? Why don't you wear the hijab, the proper hijab? Let's not talk about the face. Now, 10 years ago, we would not talk about anything except the face. Now we're compromising, huh? Please, for God's sake, for Allah's sake, cover your hair. I'm happy. Don't wear makeup. I'm happy. Don't, nobody's doing this. Why aren't you doing this? Everybody else is doing it. Why should I do it? So you need patience in here. You need patience when you know that this is the sunnah of Allah Azza wa the sunnah of the Prophet to grow a beard. Why do we grow a beard? Because Allah Azza wa tells us, the Prophet tells us, do you think I love the beard? If it's not in the Quran or the sunnah, I would have, I would have shaved it now. I'm looking since like God knows when for an evidence that's, that's permissible. I have Gillette too with counter uh, power in my pocket. but. No, khalas, then there's no room for manipulation. There is no room to play. This is the ruling of Allah. This is the son of the Prophet. I'll be patient and not doing what my self wants to do. And that is why people lack this kind of patience. And that is why we see people bribing. Do we have bribes? Big time. Do we have riba? Oh, yani, do we have embezzlement? People taking money? Uh, you go to the gas station, you fill up with 20 riyals, put 30 riyals. And you take the money in your pocket, this is a gift, this was a gift given to me. Everything goes, but because what prevents you from 
send in your gaze. Yeah, I love to watch movies. I like to listen to music. I like to do this. I like to do that. It's haram. You have to have patience. But my, my soul desires it. Your soul desires what will take you to heaven. So you have to suppress this. Now, the third category, which is to be patient when a calamity strikes. And patience is not to complain and not to do something that shows that you are not accepting what Allah has decreed upon you. Allah Azza wa told us that calamities will take place, will take place. Whether you like it or not, it's going to happen. Allah says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and certainly we shall test you with something of fear, hunger, loss of wealth, loss of lives, and loss of fruits. But give glad tidings to the sabirin, the people who endure the patient, the tolerant. So all of these calamities will happen to you. Maybe you've lived 40 years and nothing happened. It will happen. Maybe it happened and you did not feel it. Maybe Allah punished you and you shrugged your shoulders and walked away. It happens to each and every individual. But once it happens, how should we react? Because it happens every day. Um Salama. May Allah be pleased with her. Who knows Um Salama? Okay, one. Good. Bring the jug so it fills. Fill. Yeah. Yeah, Jama'ah. These are your ancestors. These are your honor. The wives of the Prophet Allah called them to be your mothers. They are the mothers of the believers. Yeah, if you don't know your heritage, if you don't know your history, you're in the wrong place. You have to know. Um Salama was the wife of Abu Salama. Abu Salama was the brother of the Prophet ﷺ through Sakli. When he died, it was a catastrophe. It was a problem. But she said, once he died, I remember that the Prophet said, ﷺ, a dua. Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi rajum. Allahumma ajirni fi musibati wa khutni khayram minna. He said, the Prophet said, and he taught this to the Muslims and she learned it from him. He said, whoever is struck by calamity, he should say, we belong to Allah and to Him we shall return. O oh Allah, reward me in my calamity and substitute me something better than it. She said, I immediately said it. The minute I was struck by this calamity and my husband is dead. And I thought to myself, now who could be better than Abu Salam? Allah would substitute me with whom? Nobody is better than the companion of the Prophet Abu Salam. And after her idda was over, who proposed to her? The Prophet Ya Allah, imagine if every time we are struck by a calamity, we immediately say this word, and Allah Azza wa Jal will give us something. Ya Akhi, the minute someone bangs my car, and I come out, you son of a so-and-so, I'm going to hit you, I'm going to step on you, I'm going to kill you, I'll kill you. Huh? <laughs> then what happens? After everything, and Najm comes after six hours, to record what's happening and then he tells me, oh, he doesn't have insurance, you have to go to the police uh, department and I spend like a day and a half and after everything that happens and I go back home, Alhamdulillah, inna lillah, inna lillah. Does this work? No, it doesn't. Why doesn't it work? Because it has to be at the first incident, at, at the minute it happens. It was reported in the authentic hadith that a woman lost her child. So she was at his grave weeping. And the Prophet Hassan walked behind her and said, Oh, uh, a slave of Allah, fear Allah and have patience. Have tolerance to what calamity has uh, uh, struck you. And the woman threw out her tears and, 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 and sobbing and she said, Go away. You were not struck by a calamity like mine. Go away. Leave me alone. So the Prophet Hassan left. Now, if someone said this to the sheikh, what would I do with him? I'm going to bench press him like six times and then... Why? Because I'm not the Prophet The Prophet left. And the companions came to her and said, Woman, are you crazy? This is the Prophet And the woman was depressed and, and shocked again. So she rushed into the masjid to meet the Prophet and said, Oh Prophet of Allah, oh Prophet of Allah, I have become patient, I have become patient. And the Prophet said, the uh, 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 patience is at the first shock of a calamity. This is what's acceptable. Not after five days or six days. And that is why 
The scholars say that a real wise man, a true believer, is behaves when a calamity takes place exactly like a fool after one month. When a, a fool is struck by a calamity, what does he do? Bangs his head in the wall, tears his clothes, uh, tears his, his hair, slaps his face, says uh, obscene things. After one month, what would happen to him? Alas, he's, he's cool, he's calmed down, he's cool now, he forgot everything. A wise man or an unbeliever does this on the first day, not waiting after a whole month. So, when a calamity takes place, yeah, you do whatever you want. Will it change? I lost my child. My child died. May, I, may Allah protect all of our children. What should I do? Why? Why me? I do this. I heard it Allah from people. I heard it from a brother who is an uncle. He's 60 over, 60 plus years. And I was visiting him as he was ill. And I say, uncle, may Allah make it easy for you. He said, my son, I have no regrets. But the only thing that bugs me is that I've been praying in this masjid for 40 years, not missing one single prayer. And look what's happening to me. But, but my neighbor, who has been there for 40 years, never prayed a single prayer, and he's as strong as a bull. <laughs> now this, I don't see it funny. I see it terrifying. After praying 40 years in the masjid, and you're 60 years plus, this is what happens to you? You lose faith in Allah, you complain of what Allah has done. This is a problem. Calamities have to happen. So, when a calamity takes place, just say, This was recorded in the preserved tablet. Whatever happens. Wallahi, whenever, I, I read a, a, an article once about one of the righteous uh, scholars, and he was tortured because he did not say that the Qur'an was created. He kept on saying what we believe, that the Qur'an is an attribute of Allah, that is not created, and it goes back to him subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, the man was being tortured, and he was being skinned alive, bit by bit. And his students around him were crying. He said, don't cry. It was registered in the preserved tablets. 50,000 years before Allah created the creation. So it's khalas, it's done. So what are you going to do? So you have to be uh, patient and tolerant. And this doesn't mean that you have a heart of stone. No, you can react, you can cry, you can uh, uh, feel sorry. The Prophet when his uh, son Ibrahim died, what did he say? The heart is saddened. And the eyes are uh, uh, watering and, and, and crying. And we do not say except what pleases Allah, and by Allah, by your departure, we are sad in Ibrahim. He, he was sad, he was crying, and the companions are telling him, you do this, Prophet Allah, you cry? He said, yes, this is mercy from Allah. But what comes out of your mouth is what you are held accountable uh, with. Finally, uh, we do need patience. And by the way, this is a very shortened version about patience because it can go on to six or seven lectures and this is what scholars usually do but here we are like a, a drive through uh, just getting sandwiches and leaving and I hope by the sake of Allah, uh, through the sake of Allah uh, and the grace of Allah that this may fill our stomach a little bit. Uh, we are in times of calamities. Look around you, the Arab Spring, the Arab idol, the Arab stuff, everything is around you is calling you for fitna. Everything is luring you to help. Shaitan is happy because his soldiers are a lot and the believers are weakened. No, you should not be like that. You should ignite your iman with patience, with tolerance. Because with all these fitna, these old calamities, these old tribulations, the scholars say, when tribulation comes, only scholars see it. And this is what happened. When tribulation came, scholars warned that this is wrong, it shouldn't be this way. And everybody said, no, no, let's go with it, ah, protest, demonstration. After it was over and they saw 
the consequences and what happened, the negative things that happened that did not benefit Islam, that has affected Islam negatively, now everybody sees it. And so everybody, everybody recognizes, oh yes, wallahi, they are right. 20 years ago when they started putting these uh, uh, satellite dishes, the scholars say, oh, haram, haram, haram. One says, Sheikh, you appear on these satellite dishes. Yes, yeah, we're not talking about good stuff. We're talking about dancing and billy dancing and songs and, and, and pornography and stuff like that. So 20 years ago, we were not talking about Quran being aired. We were talking about haram things being aired. Everybody was against us. Now, even the worst of the Muslims say, Wallah, you're right. This is filth. This is horrible things that are being shown on our TV stations. So, we have to be patient. We have to be patient when we treat our wives. And the wives have to be patient when they treat their spouses, their, their husbands. But instead of jumping the gun and uh, holding one's uh, uh, throat and uh, doing fighting and, 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 and this, this is not the right thing to do. You have to be patient when you are bringing your son, your daughter. Um, khalas, take 50 yards and go and play with the kids. You have, to, you have to bring him up like a true Muslim. I'm bored. I tried to make him recite the Fatiha and he doesn't want to. Okay, you recite it. Maybe you don't know how to recite it. You have to be patient. This is your child. This is your offspring. If you don't bring him up in a good way after you die, instead of supplicating for forgiveness uh, for you, he would curse you in your grave because you did not do a good job. We have to do our level best in igniting this patience in our heart because Umar says, May Allah be pleased with him, by Allah, we did not find the sweetness of our lives except through patience. And these calamities, these tribulations will continue to increase. And this is a test from Allah. The Prophet said, alayhi salatu wasalam, uh, Ahead of you, is addressing the companions, ahead of you, there are the days of patience. So, the, uh, 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 the Prophet said, alayhi salam, in these days of patience, those abiding by their religion would be like a person holding a, a, a stone of fire. And to those in these days of patience, wh whatever you do, Allah would give them the multiplication of the deeds of 51 of you. And the companions said, of us, the, co the companions are of them. And the Prophet said, of you, the companions. So, the more tribulations are there, the more testings from Allah are there, the more reward you will get when you're patient, and the more reward you will get when you are abiding by the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And I, uh, I pray to Allah that He makes me and you among those who are patient on doing good deeds, patient away from uh, doing bad deeds, and patient when calamities strike. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Wa barak ala abdihi wa rasulihi nabiyyina Muhammad. For a second, I was happy. I thought he was asking a question. <laughs> okay, there's a sister. Uh, I, I have a there's a sister there that has a question. earlier that 
patience has five categories. Either it is mandatory, recommended, permissible, uh, not disliked or recommended, and forbidden. And patience is not always mandatory. So in cases like what you've mentioned, it depends on the situation. Someone does wrong to me. Someone steals my wallet and I say, I have to be patient. Who shares this idea of being patient? I'd like to get my hand on your wallet. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. So nobody says that, yes, yeah, if someone steals from you, you have to be patient. Don't complain. If someone wrongs <coughs> you, you have to be patient. Don't complain. But Allah mentions in the Quran that when you punish, you should punish exactly as you have been punished. So to take even, to, be, to get even is permissible in Islam. Someone says, you're a donkey. And you say, reply to him, you're a donkey. This is halal. Not the first one, the second one. Of course, providing that the first one who said you're a donkey is not bigger than you, then you have a problem. Now I'm talking about size-wise in, in usually. So when someone does wrong to you, you're allowed to say it back with limitation. And if he does something that is haram, you cannot say, okay, he raped my wife, so I raped his wife, for example. No, this is completely, this is something you have to understand. Some they, people do this. They say they are killing our children in uh, X, Y, Z, so we kill their children. Yeah, this is wrong. They kill <coughs> our brothers in this country, so we kill their people, civilians, in their country. This is wrong. The Prophet made this, alayhi salam. No matter who says that this is permissible. So, you have to know. But... If you're patient and tolerant for the sake of Allah, then you are rewarded more. And this depends on the situation. If you tolerate and that person exceeds his limit and adds a little bit more every now and then, at the end of the day, you are encouraging him. And that is why the Prophet ﷺ had a balance. And if you go through the seerah, you will find the excellent answer to all of your questions. Allah did not send Prophet Muhammad for nothing. He sent him to be a role model. And if you go through his seerah, his biography, his life, and his teachings, you will have the perfect answer because he was the perfect man. One says, oh, sure, nobody is perfect except Allah. Ya akhi, don't be like flies, catching whatever filth you can find. I said, no, but no one uh, except him was a perfect what? Person. Human. So in, in humanity, he is the perfect <coughs> human, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Having said that, 
it is only natural to react and maybe you would suffer something that you did not suffer before because of this calamity. This doesn't affect your patience. Look at Yaqub, peace be upon him. When he lost Yusuf, he was saddened. When he's lost, he lost his second brother, what happened to him? Huh? What happened to him? He got blind. He lost his eyesight because of this calamity. So, and he's a prophet. So this is human nature. What Allah Azza wa holds you accountable uh, by is your tongue, as the Prophet said. What goes in your heart, what goes in your mind, this is all part of the forgiven uh, uh, things. But what you say, the word that you say, if it incriminates you, you are in deep trouble. Allah knows best. Uh, the patient, as I understand, should it be construed all the time as patients in a negative way? In that way, we always consider patient to be used when you are you know, frustrated, upset, or something that you probably should, should stay away from doing uh, things that become more obvious to to yourself and to others. My understanding also of the patients, you know, like I would like to understand whether am I am I on the right track or not. My understanding of patients not just for reaction to certain things, but rather it goes in a proactive way where the patients is, should be construed more as a consistency and commitment in what you are doing or rather application for the, for the sake of good deeds. Because that itself reflects your personality in terms of how you deal with that. You don't wait, you don't wait for, for an event for, you know, to react in a negative way. For, you know, and, then, and then somebody says, you know, you've got to be patient to do that. You rather do that in your day-to-day -day application. And uh, in that way, you show the consistency in what you are doing no matter what happens. Whether it is you know good or bad, you 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 have decided to do it, and, and uh, for the sake of Allah, in a consistent way, in a committed way, where you know that the, the end result is is going to be ajab. Okay, I, you know, I, I understand. I, I I understand the question, but Akhi, you have to understand that we do not live in utopia. Meaning that we are not perfect. We can theoretically sit here all night long and talk about patience. And the minute I'm in my car and someone crosses in front of me, I follow him until the corniche, until I get him off his car and start cursing him and maybe uh, slapping him, fighting him. This is human nature. We can talk about theories, but the issue is not in talking, it's in implementing. Now. As I said, the lecture, lecture is <coughs> yani, too long. We did not talk about the consistency of doing good deeds. The Prophet ﷺ said that the most beloved deeds to Allah جل, is what is consistent even if little. So we need to have patience. I get people fasting Mondays and Thursdays for six years and then they give up. Why? Wallahi akhi, I got tired. I have the brother, the tahajjud who whispered to me. Uh, the other brothers, the first thing that he did not do, and he's not doing now, like in the, in the past, is the hajjud. A lot of the Muslims don't pray the hajjud. Don't wake up before Fajr to read a juzu of the Quran. Don't give charity every now and then unless, as Sheikh Riyad said, someone gives his hand. Otherwise, Allah, alhamdulillah, my, my money is in my pocket. Nobody has been asking me for a couple of months. Ya Allah, Allah, increase this. We have a problem. So, consistency is correct, but we're human. You can't ask someone to be calm and not to be sad or not to be angered by uh, 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 someone's uh, behavior for five or ten years. He has to, you know, burst one day. But such a burst is part of human nature. The Prophet said, As you said, Kullu bani Adam all sons of Adams are. All sons of Adam are sinners, and the best of the sinners are those who repent. Meaning that we're human, we, but we try our level best to coach ourselves with the grace of Allah, to train ourselves, to reach a level where we can actually tolerate. We cannot be, you know, uh, 
Okay, and grasshoppers and, and monks and so so no, whatever you do, I'm not gonna react. This is impossible. No one knows. Excuse me, but I have other commitments. Well, I would love to say.